All right, guys, so let's get rolling on this volume of prisms and cylinders. So we're coming back to prisms and cylinders, and then the next lesson will be on pyramids and cones. So before we move on, we have to talk about volume, right? So volume is the amount of space that the solid encloses. So if we were to look at this prism right here, volume would be the amount of space within the figure, right? So with surface area, we're talking about how much area is on the outside, right? If you wanted to paint it, how much paint would go on the outside of this prism. Volume is how much stuff can fit inside the prism, okay? So it's very important that area is square units, Okay, and volume is in cubed units. So everything we do will be to the third power when we talk about volume because it's a three-dimensional thing, right? It's got height, it's got width, and it's got depth. Area just has height and a width. So in order to understand volume, you have to understand what's called a cross section. So a cross section is a horizontal cut of the figure. So imagine just taking a knife and cutting this prism in half. Now, normally that cut is made parallel with the bases. So it looks something like this. So if I add in the three-dimensional aspect of this prism, a cross section would be right there. So notice it's parallel to the top and the bottom base, and it's only representing a certain part of that prism. Now, the reason why a cross section is important is because it's the exact same size as a your bases. Because remember, a prism, as you travel up and down, think of an elevator shaft, right? As the elevator goes up and down, the size of the elevator shaft is the same from the top floor to the bottom floor. So if I travel up and down this prism, and I always make this horizontal cut, every cross section will be exactly the same size. Another good example is if you think of a stack of papers. Okay, imagine all the papers are the same size. One sheet of paper that you could pull out, that is an example of a cross section of that stack of papers. Now a stack of papers would be very much a prism, right? The same concept applies to a cylinder. If I were to have a cylinder and I would make a horizontal cut, that circle, that cross section should be the same size as the top and the bottom of my bases and the cylinder. Okay. So the total number of papers in the stack, think of that as the volume, right? So if you think of a stack of papers, however many papers are in the stack, that would represent volume, how many pieces of papers fit in that stack. So how do we find volume? It's actually really easy. Volume is much easier than surface area. There's not as many components that you have to worry about. So to find volume, we only need two things. We need the area of one of our bases, and we then we need the height of the prism or the cylinder. The formula is exactly the same for both prisms and cylinders. And the reason why that this works is because remember, as you travel from the bottom of the prism or the cylinder to the top, the cross sections are all the same size. So think of the base area as being one cross section. You just need to figure out how many of those fit in your prism. And however many that would be, would be equivalent to the height. So let's look at two very simple figures. We have a prism on the left, a cylinder on the right. Let's say the prism on the left is 10 inches wide, it's six inches deep, and it's four inches tall. So we need to find two things. We need to find the area of the base, and then we already are given our height. So to find our base area, because our base is a rectangle, all we do is six times 10. And that gives us 60 inches. Our height is given to us at four inches. So all we do then, volume equals area of the base 
times the height. So our volume is 240 inches cubed. That's it. That's all that you have to do. Again, it's the area of the base times the height. Let's look at the cylinder. So how do these change, right? The, the way that you do the problem changes based off what your base shape is. So we're still doing V equals B times H. Now, because it's a cylinder, our base is a circle. So pi r squared is our formula. So pi r squared. So we would just do 3.14 times 16, because 4 squared is 16. So our base area is 50.24. Our height, which is given to us, is 8. So for our volume, we're going to do area of the base times the height. So 50.24 times 8. So our volume of our Hello. cylinder is 401.92 feet. And again, volume is cubed. Okay. So those are the two simple shapes, right? We have a rectangular prism and a cylinder, which is always a circle. Let's do one more example using a triangular prism. Formula stays the same. Volume equals base times height. Remember, with a triangular prism, the triangle faces are your bases. Okay, So one of the biggest mistakes I see people make in a problem like this is they consider this bottom rectangle a base. In a prism, the bases have to be the same size. So that means that this triangle on the front and this triangle on the back, those are our bases. So we need that area. And then our height is the distance from base to base, so 14. Now, to find our base area, we're missing a piece of information. Because this is a right triangle, I need the lengths of the legs. So I need this amount right here to find the area of that triangle. How do I find that? I use Pythagorean theorem. So I would do x squared plus 12 squared equals 20 squared x squared plus 144 equals 400. Subtract 144, so 400 minus 144 is 256. And then we take the square root. The square root of 256 is 16. So that missing distance is 16. So the area of my base is 1 half 12 times 16. 1 half times 12 is 6, 6 times 16 is 96. So our base area is 96. We have our height, which is 14. So our volume is area of the base times the height. So 96 times 14, 1,344 centimeters cubed. And that's all there is to it, guys. Let me know if you have any questions. Next up, we're gonna do volume of pyramids and cones. Almost as easy as this. There's just one thing you add. Super basic. Talk to you soon.